Hi, everybody. So let's review what we've done. So here's my rendition of Cloud9. And in Cloud9, we've written a Python program using Flask that really creates a web server. So again, we've used Python and Flask for this. And a web server is something that stores, creates, and distributes information, in our case, web pages, to, well, here I'm drawing my poor rendition of a laptop, to various browsers on the web. So, for example, Chrome. So someone on their laptop makes some sort of request to our server, like, hey, could I see the first page of your website? And our web server constructs from these HTML templates uh, some HTML and sends that information to the browser using a protocol called Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This model or method of doing this is called a client server model. So a server is the thing that has this information, creates information. We get requests from clients, and the server serves that information to the client. The same can be said of a database server. A database server is something that stores data and serves it to various clients. So here we might have a little terminal, an application that runs in the terminal that's a client. It sends a particular request to the database server. And that database server sends the in information to our client. So the database server we're using is PostgreSQL. So that's the server. There is a small client called PSQL. So keep in mind that PSQL and PostgreSQL are two different things. One's a client, one's the server. When we use Flask, we might connect and make a request to the server, and then the database server sends information to that client, which in this case is the Python Flask application. Or there might be other clients that send information as well. One final thing to note is that the database server doesn't need to be on the same physical machine as this client or our web server. If it is, the address is considered localhost. So if we're connecting PSQL to a PostgreSQL server on the same machine, we're considering it localhost. Else, we'd give it a URL. Okay, here we are back in Cloud9. We're going to be taking a break from our Flask work to dive into PostgreSQL. So we'll be able to do all the stuff that's in the book. We'll be able to try out on a real server. In this video, we're going to be starting the server, creating a password for the root account, the account with username Postgres, and finally, we're going to be logging into the client. Normally, once we're done with the initial steps of starting the server, we'll only have to do this logging into the client. So when you come back tomorrow or the next day, you'll just be doing this step. The server will be already be running. Occasionally, Cloud9 shuts off your entire virtual machine. If that's the case, you're going to need to restart the server. You'll know that you need to do this by trying to log into the client. Let me try to do that right now. I'm just following that step of logging into the client. And I get this error, could not connect to server, connection refused. So if you see that error, you know that, oh, I need to do that restart the server by typing in that command up there. I also provide here the commands we'll be using throughout the video. So be, you'll be able to go back, pause this video here, and just take a look at those lists of the basic Postgres commands. Okay, I think we can st get started here. I'm just going to enlarge the terminal because that's all we'll be using for this video. 
Oops, sorry. There we are. Sorry for that flashing back and forth there. All right, so the first thing I need to do is start the server. Whoop. <laughs> so the server I'm starting is PostgreSQL, and what I want to do with it is start it. I could restart it. So if I change something in the configuration files, I, I would do a restart, or I could stop it. So the options, the typical options are start, stop, and restart. Cool. So now the server is now up and running. The next step is I want to change the password of that or set the password of that root account. So I'm going to first log in to the client with username Postgres. And the thing I want to log into is PSQL. I think that looks good to me. Okay, now I'm into Postgres. Now I'm going to set the password. That command is backslash password. I want to set the password for the account, the username Postgres. I'm going to enter my password here. Okay, so now I have a password set. I'm going to just quit out of this. Now I can log in. I can type the username Postgres. The server is the one that's running on my local machine, so the host is localhost. My password, the one I just typed in, and now I'm logged into Postgres. Now we can do stuff from the book. I can create a database. It, things don't need to be capitalized here, but the convention is that they are. I'll create a database called Pets. So that created a database. I can see all the databases in this server by doing backslash list. So there I have my Pets database, among the others that are kind of the default ones for Postgres. The abbreviation is backslash L. It'll give me the same list. In order to do something in pets, like add a table or something like that, I need to change into, or it's like changing directory, but I'm going to say which database I'm using. In this case, the command is backslash C for change. I want to be in pets. And now it says you are now connected to the database pets as user Postgres. Good to know. All right, so let's go ahead and create a table. I'm going to create a table dogs. And dogs have names. And I don't know how big a name could be. Let's say it's 35. Dogs have, well, breed of some sort, at least in my database. And I'm going to say owner, also 50. So that's a create table command, straight out of the book pretty much. And now I can see all the tables in the database by this backslash D. So that says I only obviously have one table, it's called dogs. I can look at the structure of that table by going backslash D and then the name of the table, dogs. That gives me the information about the structure of that table. If I go D plus, I get slightly more information about dogs. All right, let's put some dogs in the database, in, in that table. Okay, the first thing is the name. The name of my dog, Bodhi, is one of my dogs. Bodhi's a standard poodle, not that. And I'll just use my name here. Okay, hopefully that worked. And now I'm going to just do an up arrow to copy that and get another. I have two standard poodles, so I'll put my other dog in there. And let me put another one in. So my son, Adam. Let 
There's a border collie. And Roper. Okay, stuff from the book. And now let's take a look at all the entries that we have. So select everything from the table. Let me get the caps just to be dogs. And then I have the three entries. All right, let's say I want to import a file. Uh, let me quit the, this first. So here I hopefully have this charts SQL that I created previously. And let me just show you what that looks like. So I created a, uh, first I see if there's a database that exists called charts, please delete it. it drops the command for deleting a database. I create this database called charts. I change into it. So really basically everything that I would do just by when I'm logged in. So I create this table and then I insert a bunch of values into the table. So that's what my file looks like. Let me go back into, I'm just doing up or to return to a previous command here. So I'm going to log back into PSQL. And I can insert a file. Let me just show you the wrong way or an error. Let me go into template intro ver2 and here I don't have charts SQL. So if I go into PSQL here and try to import the file, uh, what was it called? Charts SQL. It'll say no such file or directory because it's not in the current directory. I've never tried this, but let me give this a shot. So I'll go up a directory and now import charts SQL. So you need to give it the path of the directory. Let me quit, uh, quit out of here again. And let me move up to that previous space where I do have charts in the current directory. I'm going to log in here. If I started PSQL from the directory that has the SQL file, I just need to import and then just give it the name of the SQL file. So it's basically the same as any other Linux command that you are um, have to give it. If it's in the same directory, you don't need to give it the path, but normally you would give the full path. There. So I have this database loaded. I can see the tables in the database by doing this backslash D. It says I only have one table. It's called Top Songs. So I can select everything from, let me get the capitalization the way. There it gives me the entries of the database. I can get rid of the whole database. And that gives me an error. Cannot drop the currently open database. That's because I'm in the database and can't delete it. So I can change to pets. Let's That command is backslash C pets. Now I can go, I'm up arrowing again, drop database charts and I drop that database. So now if I list the databases, charts are not there. Let me quit that. I can directly load a file from the Linux command line by just giving this backslash, or um, sorry, hyphen F command and giving it the name of the file, charts.sql. So there it inserts everything into the database, but I'm in Linux, I'm not in PSQL. Let me go back into PSQL here. List all the databases, charts that are there. I can use the that database, show the tables in the database, and finally do my Select everything from 
top songs and get that entry there. So that's really the basics and uh, pretty much of what you might need to know in order to try out everything in the book. I'll stop here. Let me just quit out of my um, PSQL and give it a try. Try some of the stuff in the book. Try loading a database that you create using an editor. Just kind of play around a bit to get familiarity with. The, the faster you can do this, the better you'll be able to do uh, things coming up further in the class.